Welcome back to another Natron tutorial. In this video, we're going to be playing with the chroma keyer and green screen, blue screen, black screen, trying to remove background from your uh, video or image. So to get started, we need some footage. You might have your own green screen footage, but if you don't, you can just grab some to play with at Pixabay. <clears throat> so Pixabay offers free stock photography and videos. Um, it also has uh, like affiliate links for paid. So I just changed this here. Instead of searching for images, I'm going to change to video and just search green screen. And it brings up all these different videos that we can download for free and use in our green screen project. These top ones are sponsored by Shutterstock. So these top ones actually cost. If we click on them, it's like, oh, hey, like it'll load up and be like, you can download this for $80. And which you could do. I mean, people do that all the time. And Shutterstock has a huge, you know, variety of different footage, uh, video, and images you can choose from. But we just want to pick one of these, um, a green screen. These are all the free ones here. And so choose a good one that you like. Um, I'm just going to choose, I already downloaded this one earlier, this heart. Um, but you just click on it. You click free download and then go 1920 by 1280. Hit download and just save it to your computer. So mine is in my downloads folder now. And I can go there and find it. Um, and so it says heart. So I can watch it, what it looks like. All right, cool. It's a heart like beating against a green screen. And then we can read it into Natron. So to do that, we go to the image nodes, go to read, and then select it wherever it's downloaded. Mine, I'm using Windows, and it's downloaded in my downloads folder. So find out where if you downloaded it to and read it in, connect it to your viewer, and here we go. And then we can play it in the viewer. It's not going to be as great, the playback, because it has to process the video and play it in Natron. But here we have it. So now we want to remove this green background. To do that, we need to go to the keyer nodes right here. And we want to do chroma keyer. So we select chroma keyer. And it tied in, because we had the viewer selected, it tied in not the place we wanted it. So I'll hit the control key and just drag it over top in between both of those. And now our chroma keyer is where it's supposed to be. And if we look at the settings for the chroma keyer, the properties, uh, we can see we have these different options. And so this key color, whatever color we select as the key, it'll try its best to turn that color uh, transparent, to make it invisible, so that we can have another background. So right now, if we click the transparency button here, we see that we're not seeing any of those transparency squares come through because this nothing is transparent yet. It's just green. And that's the reason you do a green screen is so you can make you choose a color that's not very common that people aren't going to have like in their skin pigmentation or on their clothing and then you can you know take it out and make it transparent. So, we could just choose the color on this color wheel. We can try and like guess and choose the right green color or if we check this box here, we can pick a color. And look, if we hover over it, it gives us the instructions. It says you have to press the control key on your keyboard and then click to select the key. If you just if you just left click here and we click over to this green, nothing happens. Oh, we click the red, nothing happens. It's because you have to hit the control key. You have to hold down the control key on your keyboard. So now I'm holding my control key and I'll left click. And now we've keyed out. We've selected that one pixel of green to be our key. And so now everything is transparent. If we click here, we can see we are on a trans, we are everything that's not the heart, everything that was green is now just clear, transparent. So now we can add in, if we add like a merge node, uh, we can actually have this be our foreground and we can add in a background. Uh, see what this did? This added the merge node in between <clears throat> the chroma keyer and the image. And so everything's showing up fine, which is fine for now. But when we add in whatever we're going to add here, which let's just do like, let's do something fun. Like let's grab the shader toy. Uh, so we have our shader toy here. And it threw the shader toy there, which we don't want either. But just for all intents and purposes, we'll keep it for now. We expand this image shader by clicking this little black triangle and then go to the presets and we'll change our uh, preset to plasma 2, how about? So now we have this plasma 2 and then plasma 2 is going into the chroma keyer which we don't want to have happen and then it's going out to the viewer. Let's break the chroma keyer first of all from there and let's put the shader toy 
into the B, the background of the merge node. Oh, come on. It's not wanting to not wanting to go. Why not? Uh, that's weird. So sometimes, like, you know, Natron will just do something, and usually it's me making a mistake, and i got to figure out what's going on here. So our merge node, how come we can't? Okay, so now that's going into there, but this is not going into there. Shader Toy 1 is like, forget you. Okay, well, let's just delete our merge then. And then let's, um, so now this is what our, this is what this is happening now. So now let's add a merge inline, and it'll work for some reason. So that was weird. I don't know what happened. Maybe one of you knows. So this is saying merge. This is saying um, they don't have the same frame rate. Uh, that's OK. So the shader toy is probably, let's look at the settings on it and see. So somewhere on the shader toy, uh, <clears throat> and it might actually be in uh, in the rendering of it, but it's rendering at a different something other than 24 frames per second and so that's fine for us and now we want this shade now we want our chroma key here to go in line with this so this has been like <laughs> way took way longer than i thought it would but at least you kind of see the process sometimes things just don't work in fact if you're learning natron you definitely experience what i just experienced where something just doesn't work the way you want it to and you got to go through and look at the properties and sometimes you got to break the pipes and then reattach them and just see what try and figure out what's going on um, but anyway we have this finished um, look now so we've taken this gr what was a green screen background uh, on our downloads here so we took this original and now we've created this out of it and then to the final step would be to render and write it out but if we look it's gonna look like a beating heart with like these plasma rays going on in the background and so to render that just as a refresher we don't actually do a lot of writing out so to actually write this we'll want to do it um, a file we'll want to do it mp4 so we'll call it heart plasma.mp4 and hit save and then we'll just drag it over here and wherever our viewer is attached uh, we can just tie this directly to where the last point our viewer is attached to. And then we can uh, just hit render and it will render this out. It'll take a little while. So it says about uh, 50 seconds long. So we'll, we'll wait for this. Um, I'll talk about, so something else with the keyer we have is a despill. And, and if we add in a despill node, what it does, it'll go through and take out all the edges sometimes this one is a 3d rendered heart so we don't have this issue so much but if you're filming a person and you have light reflecting off the like the sides of their skin you'll sometimes see a green tint like on their hair or on their skin so the D spill what that'll do is give you some options for taking out that green glow around your subject so that's an option too but it doesn't really apply to this but maybe we'll use that in a future video so we've got nine seconds remaining on this one. And then we'll watch our rendered video. And hopefully everything works well with it. So this is what we rendered out. And yeah, not too bad. It was a little choppy to see that. Let's see if that's actually rendered in our video. So yeah, it started out kind of rendering choppy. And that's because our source video that we used was an MP4. So this video here is an MP4. So it's already has some compression and it's not a super high quality. To avoid that, what we could have done is re first rendered it out as like a series of images, of still images, um, and then brought it into our project. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some optimization in a future video. But appreciate you watching. Check out the next video. Maybe we'll play with the D spill a little bit and use an actual real subject instead of a 3D rendered heart. And we'll see you in the next one.